Okay, these are all amount of substance questions. They're multiple choice um, past paper questions from old AQA A-level chemistry papers. Now, with the amount of substance, I've tried to break it down into similar themes. So all of these questions are based on using Avogadro's number. I'm going to recommend that you try to answer the question, pause on the question, do your best to answer it, and then when you've had a go for yourself, review and see how you've done. And that's going to give you an idea of whether this topic area needs a little bit more attention or not as you're revising. So let's take a look at question one. And in question one, we are starting with how many protons are there in six grams of nitrogen gas? There's actually a number of steps that you're going to have to go through to get to the right answer on this one. And there is the scope for lots of pitfalls. Now, first of all, we're remembering that Avogadro's number is the number of atoms or molecules in one mole of a substance. This is nitrogen gas. So we're talking about molecules. So we've got 6.022 by 10 to the power of 23 in one mole. But we've not got one mole of nitrogen gas. We need to work out the number of moles. And we do that by taking the mass, 6 grams, and dividing by the molecular mass. And the molecular mass is 28. Because nitrogen exists diatomically. It exists as N2. So if you get that wrong, everything else you do after this is going to take you towards the wrong answer. But once we've got the number of moles, we can then work out how many molecules there are. If one mole contains 6.022 by 10 to the power of 23, then this will be 0.214 times Avogadro's number, and we get our number of molecules. But we're still not there yet. We've got more to do. Because actually, each molecule, which is N2, has got 14 protons. So I need to multiply that value by 14, and I get to the correct answer, 1.8 by 10 to the negative 24. Next question. You'll notice here that I have amended the capital M. That's an old notation for moles per decimeter cubed. So with that in mind, have a go, see how you do. So the easiest way to do this is really to go through the calculation. It might be a little bit time consuming, but it's by far the most effective. Now, if I have got 6.6 .6 by 10 to the power of 22 molecules, of methanol, I need to find out what that is as a proportion of the actual Avogadro's number. So I do this calculation and I find that I have got 0 0.109 moles. Remember, we're looking for which of A, B, C and D has the greatest number of moles. <clears throat> if I move on, I look at B, and I can see that 3.3, .3, my mass divided by 32, my MR, gives me 0 0.103 moles. Now, at this point, I know the answer is not B because that's the lower of the two. I can also look at C, which is an ideal gas equation. So I do N is PV divided by RT. You can see that I've included 8.31. Now, that would be provided as a matter of course in the exam. Um, you'll also notice that I've changed my 100 kilopascals to 100,000 pascals. My volume is already in meters cubed, so no conversion is needed. And as I go through, I see that I've got 0 0.100 moles. That's lower than A, so the answer is not C. And then I move on to D, where I have a volume and I have a concentration. So my volume, I'm converting to decimeters cubed by dividing by a thousand and multiplying by the concentration and I get 0 0.105 moles. So the highest of all four of them is A. Next question. And a very similar idea to what we saw on the last one. I will remind you that R in the ideal gas equation is 8.31. And that would always be provided within the exam. But let's go through and see what we can find out. This time it's the smallest number of moles 
of carbon dioxide gas. Well, if I look at A, I take my M divided by MR, in this case it's 44, I get 0 0.0602 moles. If I move on and look at B, I'm using the ideal gas equation. And again, let's take a look at conversions needed. I had to change my kilopascals into pascals. My temperature though was given in Kelvin and my volume was given in meters cubed. So I didn't need to change anything there. Now this takes us to a value of 0 0.0596. That's lower. And that means that currently it's the right answer out of the two that we've done so far. The answer is definitely not A. We move on to C, which is another ideal gas equation. But again, on this one, we've got to convert our pressure into pascals, we've multiplied by a thousand, but we've also had to convert our decimeters cubed into meters cubed by dividing by a thousand. And that's where the 10 to the minus three comes from on the top line. But I've also got to convert my temperature, 327 degrees Celsius, I need to convert to Kelvin. And when I put all of that together, I get 0 0.0602. That's the same as A, B is still the lowest, C cannot be the answer. And finally, I look at D, which is ideal gas again. In this case, I've got to convert my cm cubed to meters cubed. I do that dividing by a million, and I've got to convert my kilopascals once again to pascals. And when I put all of those figures in once again, I get 0 0.0602. So the correct answer, the one that's lower than all of the other three, is B. Next question. Okay, so we have got here sodium azide decomposing to form sodium metal gas. The sodium metal then reacts with potassium nitrate to produce more nitrogen gas, and we've got the second equation to show it. If we start with two moles of sodium azide, how many molecules are then two will be formed? This is another big question. There's a lot to do and a lot to consider. So let's take a look. If I look at my mole ratio of NaN3 to N2 in the first equation, two moles of NaN3 will make three moles. Now we're told we're starting with two moles of sodium azide, so we know that we have made three moles of nitrogen in that reaction. However, we've also made two moles of Na. Two moles of NaN3 make two moles of Na. Well, why is that important? It's important because in the second follow-up equation, 10 moles of Na will make a further mole of N2. So we've not just got three moles of N2 from the first equation, we're also making nitrogen in the second stage. Now, if 10 moles of Na make two moles of N2, two moles will make 0 0.2 moles. So I have now got a total of 3.2 moles of N2. So I found out my number of moles, but I want my number of molecules. I multiply it by Avogadro's number, and I get 1.93 by 10 to the power of 24. The correct answer is B. Next question. You're seeing a similar theme here. Same ideas coming up again and again and again. <clears throat> Have a go, see how you do, and then we'll review. So we want to know this time which has the most molecules. Let's go through in turn. For A, I have converted my kilograms to grams, divide by the MR, and I've got 0 0.707 moles. I now compare that to 29.6 grams of carbon monoxide. Now my mass is in grams already. I need to work out the MR, 28. When I do that, I get 1.057 moles. So A is not the right answer. It's definitely not the highest value. We move on, we take a look at C. In this case, I need to convert my milligrams to grams by dividing by a thousand. So I do that. I then divide by the MR. We're told here oxygen is diatomic, so it's 32, and we end up with 0.694. So 
once again, if we're actually breaking this down, C cannot be the correct answer. And that leaves us with D to calculate. Now we have an M of 13.3, the MR, three oxygens, is 48, and that gives us 0 0.277 moles. That's lower again, and it means the correct answer is B. Next question. We have a gas cylinder with five kilograms of propane. How many propane molecules are there? And we're given Avogadro's number, as we always will be, unless that's what we're calculating. So let's take a look. I have a mass of five kilograms. I need to convert that to grams, multiply by a thousand. I can then use my mole equation, N is M over MR, and I can put the figures in. My M is 5,000. My MR, three carbons and eight hydrogens, is 44. That allows me to get the value of N, 113.636. But I don't want the number of moles, I want the number of molecules. So I'm going to multiply that by Avogadro's number, and that's going to take me to 6.8 by 10 to the power of 25. Correct answer is C. Next question. and a very similar theme again. But there's a significant difference on this one. So think about it very carefully, and when you're ready, review the answer. Okay, my start point is that we've got 0 0.01 moles of NH3. I also know that the number of molecules is therefore 0 0.01 multiplied by Avogadro's number. So that's gonna give me a value of 6.022 by 10 to the power of 21. So I know how many molecules I have, but that's not the question. The question wants to know how many atoms there are. Now, NH3 contains four atoms. So I now need to remember to multiply that value by four, and that takes me to the answer D. And final question on this video, one of many examples like this that you've already seen, which of these contains the greatest number of atoms? Again, a huge amount to consider here. So take your time going through it and then see if you can get to the right answer. Let's go through each in turn. A, 127 milligrams. So that is going to give me 0.127 divided by 126.9. Or does it? Because what we're not seeing here is an awareness that iodine exists as a diatomic molecule. So actually, the reality is that we are going to do it divided by 253.8, which is the MR of I2. So we're actually dealing with 0 0.0005, and we're avoiding one of the key pitfalls. If we then work out B, we have 1.54 by 10 to the minus four kilograms. So we need to multiply that by a thousand to get to grams. And we end up with 0 0.005 moles. So a bigger value. I can then calculate um, C. Now, once again here, I've got a mass, but this time it's in milligrams, so I need to divide by a thousand. I divide that by the MR of carbon dioxide, which is 44, and I get 0 0.00184 moles. And finally, I calculate D. I've got to convert my kilograms to grams. I divide by the MR of 17, and I've got my number of moles. But again, that's not what the question is. The question wants to know how many atoms there are. So I multiply each of those values by the number of atoms within them. Two I's, one P, there's a C and two O's, so that's three in CO2, and there's an N and three H's, so that's four in NH3. And once I've finished those calculations, I can look at the numbers of atoms that are present, and I can see that the highest of those four values is D.